Good evening, everyone. Hi, let's get started. So, like a scene from a horror movie, a woman walks home alone and, not, and only nothing to be followed. The attacker runs after her and stabs her several times. She screams, she cries, she struggles. All these are heard and seen by her neighbors, but no one comes out to help. That was happened to Kitty Jennifer in 1964, New York City. The check six incident brought development of a social psychological therapy called by Santa Effect. And today, in the presentation, me, Luna, and Daisy is going to talk about what is by Santa Effect and what we can do to prevent it. by standard effects. So we're gonna have four parts. The first one is what is by standard effect. Secondly, cause. Third one is responsible and sympathy. And finally, our solution. So what is by standard effects? By standard effect is a social and psychological theory that explains why individuals are less likely to provide help to a victim if they are in the presence of others. And much research nowadays has focused on various factors that may cause this problem. For example, number of bystanders, diffusion of responsibility, underestimating the emergency, or pluralistic ignorance. Diffusions of responsibility mean that they think the other will take care of the problems so they can quit, they can do nothing. We are underestimating the emergency of the problems. And lastly, pluralistic ignorance mean that you think the other will take care of the problems and you can quit and you can do nothing. By standard effects have been observed in many different areas such as Vietnam or Japan and other countries and can be caused by different factors, but the effect is remain the same. We need to be aware of by standard effect and take the, and take the action when it's necessary to help those in need. Responsibility and sympathy. So does responsibility and sympathy get involved? Choosing not to help or maybe help start from responsibility and sympathy. A person with a high rate of responsibility and sympathy will be supportive and have a higher chances that will help the victim even if there are many people around. So this makes many researchers curious about whether the function of the brain get involved in this process. And here it is. We have the structure of the brains. Firstly, the uh, Medical prefrontal cortex has been linked into prosocial behavior, like regularly helping others. Others suggest that choosing not to help someone may be an automatic response. According to studies, observing one person threaten or harm another also activates the remote area, which makes them have to act. However, the presence of other people have increased personal distress overriding the happening in things or, or decreasing the likelihood of happening. In 2018, a Dutch psychologist tried to combine the social reasons for bystander apathy with the human con uh, ba brain based contributions of personality. As they say, the first process is reflexive, means that we freeze out. This is when the distress system reacts. You don't know what to do, stand there doing nothing. And then reflective mean that you're thinking, oh, should I help them or what should I do? By standard effect also linked with human relationship, such as when the person is needing help, look similar to like your old friends or like celebrities or belonging to the same group as society as yours, you may, would, you may want to help them more rather than a whole new stranger. You choose to help the one who's familiar with us to reduce the gap between them. And because you may know their background, so you will be more comfortable giving support. So is there a certain solution for bystander effects? What do you guys think? For me and Luna, we agree that the answer is not really. However, we can all be an active bystander by using this tip. 
So before stepping in, try to use the A, B, C approach. So what is A? Access for safety means that before you, uh, so when you see someone in trouble, ask yourself first, is it possible for me to intervene? Is it safe for me? Remember, your personal safety is priority. Never ever put yourself in danger. B, be in a group. It's safer and way more effective to call out an actions and behavior in a group. If this is not an option, try to report it to someone who can act. And lastly, C, care for, the, care for the victim. Ask the victim that if they are okay, what things you can do for them. And after you intervening safely, please apply the 4D. Direct, distract, delegate, and finally delay. So what is direct? Direct means you call out the negative actions and stop the continuous situations. Distract means you calm the situation down and try to get the victim out there. Delegate means that you call for help, asking support from the others, and finally delays. If the situation is so dangerous, it's out of control, and you cannot handle it, temporarily leave the victim alone, and then after, come back to ask them if they're fine, if they're okay, or if they need your help. Overall, what's the we need law for? If the people just want to pretend that they care, that they want to help, but because they're afraid of involved in two laws. So does the victim really help or the situation safe? No, everything they do is sketchy. So we need to do is teach the, our children from when they was young age. Teachers, friends, or maybe uh, parents, or maybe you, one of you guys can help all one of you guys are the source of forming children awareness of taking responsibility to help the victim even if we are the whole new stranger. Don't leave the victim alone. So maybe if your kids is the victim, teach your kids that it is okay and that your kids need to actively research or maybe support the others and ask for the support. So we are pioneers, let's change our generation so no by certain fact is happen and we can do that if we try. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>